Hey everyone, so today we're going to do some uh, anti-differentiation along with uh, differentiation as well. Uh, this question that we're going to do today, uh, it's quite popular in the exam. It's also going to be especially in your school sects. It's one of those more difficult questions that you will see. Okay, so this question involves uh, a function where there are two parts. First part is you derive that function and then the second part is using your answer to the first part, you have to anti-derive something which you normally wouldn't be able to anti-derive. So it's a really good question that uh, we have to know how to do it. So I'll show you how this works and hopefully you can understand and let's go. Part A, find f dash x which is an, uh, the derivative of our function over here. The problem though in our function is sine inverse 1 on root x. You cannot derive that because it's, in, it's not in this form, so there's no way to derive this by itself. You have to bring it into this form first, but how do you do that? Well, you can let u, so this, if the function looks really irritating or annoying, right? Like it's in some form that you don't know how to deal with, just let u equals that. In this case, one on square root x, which you can write as x to the power of negative half. Negative mean it's on the denominator, half mean it's square root. Okay, right, so this is like chain rule. You have, if you want to find the y dx, you go du dx multiply by dy du. Because the du cancels out, you're left, you're left with dy dx. How do you find du dx? Well, we already have u in terms of x. You can easily uh, derive that to get your du dx. So bring negative half down. Subtract power by 1, we get negative 3 on 2, that's du dx. How are we supposed to get dy du? Well, we know that we let u equals 1 over square root x, which is this function right here. So y, treat y as fx, y equals sine inverse of u in this case, because u is the function we let uh, to be the inside. Right, so y equals sine inverse of u, yes, we can anti-derive this, dy du, uh, we can derive this, dy du equals 2, sine inverse of u. So this is in that form x of a, or u of a, a in this case is 1. You can derive it, which you should get, 1 over square root 1 minus u squared. Okay, afterwards, you can sub in your two, fun uh, your two derivatives together to solve for dy dx. Negative 3 on 2, multiply by 1 over 1 minus u squared. Okay, in this case, let's just multiply it in. Negative 1, 2 in the denominator, x to the power of negative 3 on 2. You can bring that to the denominator, and if you want to make it look nice, that's what it looks like. You have the x cube inside and the square root as the square root. Then you multiply that by 1 minus u squared, u squared in this case, so u is 1 uh, x to the power of negative half, x to the power of negative half, if you square that, it's just essentially 2 times ne uh, negative half, you should get x to the power of negative 1. So another way of course, another form is 1 over x, and you can write it that way. So we're just shortcutting things, making things look nice. And of course, 2, you can bring the uh, Functions inside the square root together, x cubed times one minus times one minus one over x. So you uh, you can bring x up top minus one over x, and this simplifies to so x divided uh, x cubed divided by x gives you x squared, and you end up with x minus one. Afterwards. We can see that there's an x squared, there's a square root. You can take the x out and you're left with x minus 1. Okay, and that's the y dx, your first derivative. So why did I go through all this trouble of simplifying this many things? Well, on part b, you will see that you need 1 over x square root x minus 1. So where's that x square root x minus 1? Right here. You want to bring your derivative so that uh, it looks similar, at exact same or at least similar to what part b is, which in this case is 1 over x 
square root x minus 1 and that does look similar we just have the negative half out there okay so part b it says solve for four uh, so terminals for two one over x x minus one right so you can actually use your information from the first part your answer from the first part to help you solve for this okay so we want to solve for four two one over x x minus one how do you do this well you ha if you anti-derive this part this section right here so your answer if you anti-derive your answer your derivative you should get back to its original function right that's just how it works so sine inverse 1 root x if you anti-derive your answer that's obviously what you should get sine inverse 1 on root x okay what you can do is we need to bring this integrand right here so that it looks the exact same as this integrand the one that we need the problem is we have negative half what do you do to get rid of negative half just bring it outside and you get 1 over x x minus 1 dx okay and still of course if you anti-derive that we know it should equal our original function and to get rid of the negative half just bring that negative half to the right hand side x x minus 1 dx you can bring that to the right hand side you should get negative 2 sine inverse 1 on square root x okay it doesn't look exactly the same yet we still have the terminals 4 2 so just add that on top 4 2 but how do you bring that to the right hand side well obviously if you have terminals then you have 4 2 here as well if you want to find um, what this integrand is just sub in 4 and then subtract sub in 2 let's work on that if we sub in 4 into our function right here negative 2 sine inverse 1 divided by square root 4 square root 4 is 2 so that's 1 on 2 minus minus so we have a minus sign but then there's also a minus so it becomes positive 2 sine inverse you sub in 2 over here you get 1 on square root 2 okay what is sine inverse of a half? That is, neg uh, that is pi on 6. And what is sine inverse of 1 on square root 2? That is pi on 4. And of course, you just multiply that in. You get negative pi on 3 plus pi on 2, which gives you the final answer of pi on 6. Right. So for part B, you wouldn't be able to do it. I mean... The question says the question is a hence question so that inf uh, implies that you have to use part a to solve for this and that's how you have to do it just anti-derive so the anti-derivative of the um, your answer from part a should equal the original function and then you just try to make your integrand look the exact same as the question so this is what we did here looks the exact same as that and then the right hand side is what you need to work with Afterwards, just solve normally, anti-derive normally, you should be able to get your answer. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully you took something out of this and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.